Well, this is a training video on the ScanInspect BGA system from ScanCAD International. The training video is broken up into two sections to reflect the software. The system has an instructor that is used for programming the system, and it has an inspector that is used by the operator for actually performing the inspections. All of this is covered in the ScanInspect BGA workflow paper documents as well as this video. Uh, essentially, the BGA inspection system is used to inspect uh, BGA devices either in a tray or outside of a tray. For this video today, we will be inspecting them in a tray. Uh, we are looking for absence presence of balls, balls out of position, balls that are too large, too small, they have some surface damage, um, even extra balls. So that's what this system, uh, this system does. Uh, for the purposes, again, of this video, we will start with the uh, instructor. Um, and actually, before we go in the software, we'll go ahead and place the tray of the, the parts onto the system. You'll notice that there is a drawer that goes in and out of the system. We have some tooling set up on the system. Again, each customer will set up their own tooling. So this is some temporary tooling for this video today. Okay, as you place a tray of components, it's important to tap the tray lightly at an angle, as you see here, so that the parts fit in their cavities in, uh, in the uh, correct corner or side, so it's repeatable. Again, this is the instructor video, so this is the programming operation, and you'll want to make sure that, that the uh, tray of the parts is oriented and the parts are properly in the tray the way you will want the operator to be doing this in the end. Also, I will comment on the video here. We do have a couple of rulers here for the tooling. This will be useful, as you'll see in a couple of minutes. You may or may not want to do that. Once the uh, parts are on the, uh, the drawer of the system, we'll slide the drawer in. I am sliding it in slowly, not slamming it in so to keep the parts again, because they are loose on this tray. We need to keep them in a repeatable position. Okay, the software, as I mentioned, is, uh, is uh, well, we have two different modules here, the instructor module and the inspector module. This training we're going to be talking about is the instructor module. It is password protected, so I will go ahead and enter the password. The password that ships with the system is ScanCAD, and of course you'll want to change that when you get into your facility. Across the top of the screen, you can see any existing jobs that are in the system. We have another option to scan first golden board, um, we can actually move to the inspector if you wish, and there's a variety of other tools here. For the purposes of programming, the, really the next step is we're going to want to scan first golden board. So we'll go ahead and select that. There are a variety of resolutions that you can work with based on the ball diameters. And again, your manual can give you more information on that. Uh, for the purposes right now, I'll be scanning at 600 dpi. As far as the job name goes, um, the, the nomenclature, the structure, is to have a job name, an underscore, and a number if you want to use the uh, documentation capability that's built into the product. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll put in a number two here. This will be the second um, uh, tray, if you will, of, of parts that we're going to be inspecting here. When you ask it to scan the first golden board, it first does the scan of the entire image inside the system. And we will want now only to scan the area of the, of the um, that we're interested in. Again, because we are using these rulers, I can go ahead and zoom in closer, and I have a variety of, of zoom keys on this. For training purposes, the A for all key, there is a M for max zoom, a Z is an intermediate zoom, and if you wish, there is an H that gets you very, very close. So the purposes of our work here, I'm going to hit the Z for zoom key, and to get a little bit closer and set my cursor. I'm just moving my mouse, clicking the left button of the mouse, moving my mouse to a zero, zero point on the rulers here, and then moving my mouse. The reason I'm doing that, you'll notice that there's an indicator in the lower left corner. If I zero out on the rulers, that means the zero, zero point of the image is the zero, zero point of the indicators on the screen. That will greatly help the operator in the future when running the software because they can point to a specific device and they'll have an actual X and Y location of that device where there might be a, a bad ball. For these devices, they're very large, so it's, it's not a problem, but you can imagine if there's 500 devices on the screen. So again, I zoomed in using my Z or M or H to be where I want to be. I hit the A key, zoom out, A for all, 
Again, I'll zoom in a bit, and I'm just going to draw a window that's slightly larger than the area that I want to, to scan or to inspect. That first scan was done at very low resolution, permitting the entire area to be scanned. It's now doing a higher resolution scan, that 600 dpi we were talking about, of just the area of interest. The next step in the process, now that we have this scanned area of interest, is we'll want to de-skew the image. It's actually asking at the bottom of the screen to define a reference line. That can be a vertical line or a horizontal line. In this case, because of the length of this tray, we're going to go ahead and do a vertical line. You can line up in anything you wish, balls, uh, uh, substrate edges, device edges, the tray itself, but ideally pick something where you know it's a vertical line. So I'm moving the mouse over to where I would like to draw a vertical line, hitting the left button on the mouse. I will go ahead and zoom all the way out. Come on down, I'll hit Z for zoom again, and just move it so my mouse and hit the left button again. This will now de-skew or eliminate any skew in, uh, in the image, so it's now perfectly orthogonal. Okay, we have now scanned our image, and we're now inside looking at the software. Again, I'll come across the top of the screen to show the various functions. If I move across the screen here, there are a variety of things that can be done. But really, you will be spending all of your time either using the icons along the left or in the teach ball function. If I look at these, these are virtually identical, the icons or the steps. The only difference in the, um, the teach ball menu is the fact you have the ability in the teach ball menu, submenu, to define an inspection window. So you can actually reduce the area where the inspection is taking place. That's a benefit, again, if you want to use this ruler, you can do that and only inspect where the balls are, and that way you're not inspecting where the ruler is, where the tooling is, okay? So the first step in the process is to insert your board fiducial, step one. If I move my mouse over the icon over here, you'll see that there's a little micro help line that says define fiducial inside drawn window, okay? So you can see there's the same function on the other icons or over here. So what we're going to do is we recommend you pick fiducials at opposite corners, at diametrically opposed corners if possible. So again, you want to get in close, excuse me, you want to get in close, so maybe high zoom, and draw a window around the area that you would define as a fiducial. Now I'll share with you the reason we're using this is because these components do not have any fiducials on them that are usable, so we picked a corner here that represents uh, an image that the, the, op, the system will look in this window and attempt to match this perfectly. If I were to draw a window just around one ball, this would not be a good fiducial because it could match on the wrong ball when it's doing its alignment in the future. So we want to pick an area that, that includes enough diversity and again located here. So basically we have our fiducial, our window is drawn, we have now entered that fiducial in as fiducial 1 okay, in the system. Uh, we now need to uh, draw a fiducial 2, so I'll go across opposite corner, zoom in close again, hit H for high zoom, and I'll draw a window again here. Notice how unique this feature is with the black, the green, the gold, and the silver. There's no way that the image recognition would have, uh, it could not confuse any other space as a fiducial here. Okay, we'll go ahead and program this. Instead of the icon, I'll go back to the teach ball menu, and insert fiducials. You'll see it goes to the same place. Fiducial 2, boom. Okay. Okay, if we look at our teach ball menu, the next question here again is this defining an inspection window. This is the only difference between here and the icons. And yes, in this case, since I am um, since I am using um, the tooling in this uh, for this image here, uh, I will like to ignore the, the, uh, that area for my inspection. So I'll draw a window now just outside of where I'd like the inspection to be. One of the reasons we, we don't want to draw a huge window or inspect over the tooling is the system is looking for extra balls. So items that might appear as an extra ball would be, appear as false calls. So it reduces your false calls to do this correctly. So you can see I now have a window that's drawn around the board. That's my inspection window. Let's move to step three, which is called ball extraction. It does a what we call a color separation and extracts all of the balls on the board. If I take a second now, you can see that I can turn off the color image and you will see this blue monochrome image on the screen. 
which we call R. First R means first raster, okay? And then finally, there is a green image, which are the balls, which we haven't programmed yet. So what you see here is we just did this step here. It is called ball extraction. Let's now do ball recognition, step four. You'll notice now we have a green image. Again, at the bottom of the screen, I can turn off the green Im image, turn off the color, the blue, and the green. I'm only sharing this with you because this is a, a, a nice, uh, you can see how easy the system is to use. Okay, the next function after ball recognition is a ball count in a selected area. Again, I still have the window drawn from a minute ago when I defined my inspection area. And you'll notice that I have 12,913 balls. Okay, that means that there is an extra ball somewhere in here because I really have 12,912 balls. Uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'll use the function here called delete areas outside selection. This, this eliminates any balls that are outside of that window. So it eliminates any balls that were discovered on the tooling. So that is now gone. So again, that's edit delete outside the selection, okay? So um, again, you can draw a window at any time around a selection, and there is a, a number sign here on the icons. It says get total count of all dots located in the drawn window, which are the green dots, or under teach ball, we have the same function here, ball count in selection area. We're at 12,913 inside the selection area. So we have an extra ball in here. Uh, the way you can do this is you can zoom in to the area of interest, turn off the color image so we don't, we're not distracted by that. And what you can do is uh, come over here to view, zoom. We have something called auto page. There's also a hotkey called control Z. By the way, you'll notice within our software, all of the hotkeys are listed next to the functions. So here are the zoom keys we just talked about, A, Z, M, and H. Okay, and now here is this auto page capability. The beautiful thing about auto page is, at the bottom of the screen, it'll, it'll tell you this, it breaks the screen up at whatever zoom level you are into a number of frames, in this case 18. Press N for next, P for previous. So what we're doing now is we're looking at the screen, looking for any extra balls that might be there. So I'm stepping through, looking at these different screens for any extra balls. Again, the pattern is very consistent on BGAs. And so the eye has the ability to pick these out. Again, you're simply stepping through, looking for that extra ball, that little extra culprit. And there we have it right here. You can see it on your screen. You can even see it on the video, I'm sure. And you'll notice in real life, what we have there is we actually have some debris that's in there, okay? So again, this is a golden board. The parts we put on here are as clean and as nice as you can get. Even then, you're going to have some some errors. We're creating the golden board that's going to be used. So it, this is cleaning up that golden image. Okay, we can check our ball again, our count. We notice we have the correct number at 12,912 balls. We are finished with our programming at this point. We have another icon where we send the inspection area and all this information to the inspector module. Again, under the teach menu. Send ball information to the inspector. All right. It sent all 12,912 to the inspector. And at this point, we can actually move, if we wish, to the inspector module. We've now actually left the instructor, and we're in the inspector. And so for the final part of this training video on the instructor, we'll go ahead and inspect the ball. So we need to simply select the job name and perform an inspection. This is essentially what the operator will be doing. They'll be placing a tray of balls into the system, clicking the inspect ball, and it will bring up any errors that might happen. Obviously, as you saw a minute ago, there, were, there are some errors on this with extra material that could be a ball. And so you'll either get a pass or a fail screen. In this case, we have a fail screen. It's asking, do you want to see the results? We click yes. And now we have three potential errors on, on the system. They are numbered from one to three again. So I can hit N for next or P for previous, and it will take you to those errors. Again, high zoom. So we can see here we have some contamination. We have a ball that's actually slightly large on the golden board. And then we have some contamination again off to the side. So those are the three errors that are discovered. Okay. This concludes the 
the uh, training video for the Scan Inspect BGA system instructor module. Again, this is also covered in great detail in your Scan Inspect BGA workflow. Thank you very much.